this tutorial I want to start talking about export. Getting your timeline out of Premiere Pro so that your customer can have it in a DVD, on a Blu-ray, they can have an item that can be played on their website, you can play it on Vimeo or YouTube. The idea is to be able to get your product out of Premiere Pro so that it can be used and seen and had by your customer. Final export. Now there are quite a few different options of different things that you can do. You don't actually have to export directly from Premiere Pro. You can export from Premiere Pro to another program that will export it, or you can even have Premiere Pro completely closed and have it exported through the media encoder, which is something since CS6 I quite like to do because the media encoder has been so well advanced over the last few releases. So let's just have a look at some of the options that we have, and we're going to start off by talking about Dynamic Link which is a feature that's been in Premiere Pro for a while now, which works with After Effects and Encore. So the first thing you need to do is select the sequence that you want to export. I'm on the edited sequence here. There are a number of different sequences in my bin, but this is the one I'm going to just talk about exporting. And then you can go up to the File menu, and you can come down to start off with to Adobe Dynamic Link. And you'll see that the first option says Send to Encore. Now this is actually pretty much the only send option that you have with Adobe Dynamic Link where you can actually send something from one program to another. As I'll explain in a minute, all the other ways are kind of collecting from. It'll become clear as we actually do the tutorial. But firstly, we can send to Encore. Now, I have actually done a series of tutorials on Encore. So if you click Send to Encore, it will open up Adobe Encore, and you can actually start to create a DVD with menus. If you go to the Creative Cow website, and you click on the Tutorials tab, and you look for Encore, you'll see a series that looks like this, Adobe Encore Basics, there's nine of them, and you can go and check out how to make them, how to create motion menus, and slideshows, and all sorts of bits and pieces. So I'm not going to do any more on that at the moment, just encourage you to go and watch those if you really need to use Encore more. Just going to minimise that. And then we're going to look again at Adobe Dynamic Link, and if we go to File, Adobe Dynamic Link, you'll see that we've got these three options we can replace with an After Effects composition, a new After Effects composition or import an After Effects composition. In other words, I can't take my edited timeline, my sequence, and send it to After Effects. I need to bring in After Effects compositions. Now, I've done a similar tutorial in After Effects about being able to take After Effects compositions and get them over to Premiere Pro. So if you want to know more about those, go to the After Effects Basics series where we've covered the similar thing but from the After Effects perspective. So how do I get my sequence from Premiere Pro into After Effects? The answer is you actually need to have After Effects open and work from there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have After Effects open at the back and then I'm going to open Premiere Pro on top of it and kind of minimize it a little bit or just make it smaller so I can see it and be able to work with my sequences. And I'm going to double click the sequence bin so I can actually see the sequence item. And then I'm simply going to take the icon for this edited sequence, which is this icon here, going to click and drag and drop it into the project panel of After Effects. And when I let go, you'll see that After Effects comes to the fore, and I've actually got an item here, which is edited See How This Start CS6 Premiere Project. Okay, so this is actually the sequence. And if I maximize this tab, you'll see that it tells me that it's Adobe Dynamic Link. So I'm going to minimize that again. So how can I use that? Well, it's as simple as this. You can either take it to a new composition icon and create a new composition the same size as the original project, bearing in mind that the composition I've got down here is only 10 seconds long, so I'm only going to be able to see 10 seconds of this, which goes on for a probably, we can see up here, 2 minutes and 5 seconds. So this is a very long one, and if I drag it down here, I'm only going to be able to see 10 seconds. So if I want to see the whole thing in After Effects, I drag it down to the new comp icon, and that then creates a new composition of the whole thing all the way through, or alternatively, if I go back to my expression, say I wanted this text over the top of this item, I can take the item, again, either the composition this time or the actual footage item, and drag it to the bottom of my stack, and seeing I've got transparency, I can actually see my example text going over the top of the first 10 seconds of my footage. If I want to see a different part of my footage, I can, of course, click and drag and pull it along, but that's actually going to be quite a long process until we get to the appropriate bit. So just bear in mind that there are different ways of being able to do this. Okay, so that's how I can use Adobe Dynamic Link to bring it across. Alternatively, of course, I could have started in Adobe After Effects and gone to File, Adobe Dynamic Link, and Import a Premiere Pro sequence. 
So the way you need to think about it is if you want to send something from Premiere Pro to After Effects, you need to go to After Effects and pull it in from Premiere Pro. And if you want to send from After Effects to Premiere Pro, you need to go to Premiere Pro and pull in the After Effects composition. So that's how we can get it across. That's how we can use Adobe Dynamic Link. It's a very simple drag and drop or alternatively using the file menu. But if you want to think about it in a way that kind of makes sense and you want to have Premiere Pro sending to After Effects, then I would have Premiere Pro open and just simply drag whatever icon it is across to the project panel and then that item is added to the project panel and ready to be used either as a brand new composition or at the bottom of a composition that you already have working. Okay, so in the next tutorial we're going to start talking about exporting directly from Premiere Pro.